Okay, we've got the airplane down here in front of the hangar. We've got it tied down so it doesn't tip over. Um, what we're going to do right now is we're going to go through the process of identifying um, what actually was the cause of failure on this engine. Uh, we've done nothing with it so far. We haven't taken any time to do any inspection at all. We want to save this um, so that we can show you the process that we would typically go through in order to tr identify uh, the failure mode on the engine. And I promised the owner that we're going to be able to find out what caused this thing to fail, and I'm confident that we can do that. But we're going to critique everything that we find on the airplane, and then we'll lead all of the individual little um, discrepancies that we find. Um, and I, I have no idea why it quit. I haven't even seen the video on the accident yet, so um, I, I don't have any audio to tell me what went on with the thing. We're just simply going to tear this thing apart and um, see what we find. And we thought we'd bring you along for that little adventure to help you identify some of the process that we're going to go through also. So we'll be back here in just a second and we'll get started with the rest of the boys in the shop um, digging in and doing inspection and videotaping all of this as we go through the whole process. Should be fun. So a couple things right off the bat that I wanted to point out. Um, it's got fuel. Um, so we didn't run out of gas. That's always important that um, we don't run out of gas on the thing. So we know that. Um, we've got a um, fuel filter in here. And looking at the fuel filter, it looks like it's pretty clean. I think that um, you can see that fuel filter actually looks full of fuel. And it looks as though um, there's not very much contamination. A little bit right in the very bottom down here. Let's get a close up of that. So there is a little bit of contamination in there, but that's what the fuel filter's job is. There's fuel on the outlet side. And remember, we've got to have fuel spark and air going to the thing. So we're going to be looking at all those things. Fuel coming into the fuel pump, and I see fuel there. And I see fuel going out of the fuel pump on both of those. So that's at least a good sign. Air cleaner. Um, air cleaner. If we look in here, I see a lot of crap. Oh, hi. I didn't mean it to do that. What happened? I lost. You want to grab a pair of dikes and pop off this air cleaner and we'll look at that. The routing on this throttle cable, not real fond of that. This one's not too bad. And the splitter doesn't look to be hammered. I hate these little safety wire zip ties on the thing. That's always a problem. Okay, we changed plans. The, the steady cam wasn't working like it's supposed to. I gotta educate myself a little bit more on that. So right now we're just taking a look at um, this air cleaner. Um, we'll do some close-ups of that and we're gonna go ahead and pull that off. Jason, you can go ahead and... You know. So here we've got a um, little bit of oil on the inside. Not horrible, but a um, little bit of oil down on the inside of that thing. And we'll take a look down the intake of this thing. And I'm going to need you to run the throttle for me just to still work. We're at full throttle right now. I don't know if it works or not, but needles spin very easily. We'll probably pull these carbs apart and do an inspection on those as well. Okay, um, let's go ahead and pull the float bowls off just so we can uh, take a look at the what's going on inside the float bowl. I'm actually guessing that we're probably going to be um, looking at a seizure of some sort, but we're, we're just checking this side since we're set up to do that right now. Actually, you see that screen on that side right there? Yeah, this I'll get a picture of that in a minute. Um, so these, so those look clean and both of those are floaty, so that's good. So the little screen that goes on this one is pretty buggered up. It's been mashed up kind of hard. There's no corrosion in here. That's what the, no, that one's even been mashed a little bit hard too. It's just a poor fit going in there is what caused that. Okay, we're looking good there. 
Um, we haven't checked radiator fluid yet, so let's go ahead and just see if we've got uh, fluid in the radiator. Go ahead and pull that cap off and just take a peek down in there. I see fluid dripping. Don't see any fluid in it. Oh, you don't? That's interesting. Anyway. Interesting. So the overfill bottle is full. You gonna get a ladder for us so we can yeah. peek down in there? It actually feels as though Actually feel fluid in that. Normally, I would feel something in that line right there. And there's also a small leak on this side. side tank. As far down as I can see in that coil, I don't see any liquid. Well, that would be bad. Should be seeing it right up to the very top up yeah, there is what should we should be, be seeing, top. so that's not good. Okay, I'm going to try and get um, a little footage looking straight down in that thing. I don't feel anything there, no, do you? No, no lubricant. Or I mean, coolant. Let me climb up there and get some video. I'm wondering if it came out of drained out of that hole. Yeah, I noticed a couple of anomalies on that. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's not good. Okay, let's see if I can... We know that the radiator is at least low on it. We should validate how much fluid's actually in there. So let's get a bucket and see if we can capture uh, whatever comes out of the system entirely, and then we'll kind of quantitize that. Not a big fan of the plastic tees. Keep in mind, this is the primer system, and not a big fan of the primer system either. There isn't any reason at all that um, you need the primer system on an engine like this if you've got the chokes working correctly. The main reason that uh, primer systems get installed on airplanes is because um, owners don't know how to keep the um, choke system working correctly. Uh, but if that if any one of these lines crack or that plastic tee breaks, um, guaranteed it's gonna it's gonna fry that cylinder. There's just too much air getting into the downwind side of the carburetor, and it's it's gonna cause um, an engine failure for sure. So right now we're basically um, draining the um, radiator fluid so we can see how much is in there. Um, we will as soon as we're done with that, we'll go ahead and we'll pull the exhaust off to see. Um, if the cylinders have been scored badly, I'm sure that they have been, but um, probably an over temp. Um, should have seen it on the uh, water temperature gauge in the cockpit, and I'm pretty sure this one does have one. Let's go look. There's the water temp gauge right there. I'll take a little look at this side over here where the ballistic parachute is mounted. So the story is that while they were moving the airplane off of the runway, the tow truck had pulled it up onto the trailer. And even though the owner of the aircraft had warned them about the ballistic parachute, um, they weren't really paying attention. And apparently when um, they pulled on the airplane, they deployed the uh, parachute and the rocket motor went out um, less than two feet away from one of the police officers that was standing around the thing and uh, he had reported that everyone was pretty shocked at that whole thing, but um, really, really a big risk um, moving or even dinking around with an airplane that's just been involved with a crash that has a ballistic parachute on the thing. And you can see over here, we'll take a, some video of the big hole and the tearing out of the skin. Um, actually, it wasn't really, wasn't really designed for that cable to be mounted on the inside in there, but 
it managed to pull its way all the way through that sheet metal and rip that out of there. Most of it here. Oh, let me get a video of this if you're going to do that. Okay, so we uh, we did the radiator. Here's how much fluid we got out. We lost a little bit on the ground, but that's about, you can kind of see through there about how much we've got. Um, that's not much, but it may, I don't know. We couldn't see any fluid in there, but um, I don't know. It seems a little short. We'll see. Uh, next, if it was an over temp, um, then we'll see it on the, um, on the pistons and the cylinder walls. So the next step is right now while we're downloading the other camera, we're going to go ahead and pull the exhaust off, and then we'll do a little bit of video of um, removing and looking inside. We may even pull the cylinders off so we can see what they look like up close, but we'll see what we get first by pulling the exhaust off of the thing. like the magneto side um, cylinder has um, seized it's scuffed doesn't look horrible but it, it looks like that's where the actual stoppage came from um, we're gonna stop the video now and then we'll get the camera set up to be able to take a little closer look in here um, before we pull the head or any of that off of there right there Okay, let's go ahead and pull that um, prop down. There's the first scuff right there. Now that's on the exhaust side. Go ahead and uh, keep rotating it right on through. Yeah, I can't quite see in there. Let's. Um, yeah, we're going to have to get a different light. Let me shut this down. And we're recording. Um, let's go ahead and pull the spark plugs and then we'll uh, look at each one of them. Then we can use the, um, the light um, through the spark plug hole to try and illuminate that. Um. They are all solid terminal type um, NGK BR8ES spark plugs. Those are the correct spark plugs. I'll hold that plug right up next to the, and I'm going to try and zoom in on that like old Jim does. I don't have quite the same lens that he has. Huh. Yeah. Huh. Interesting. Um, go ahead and, um, hmm, I didn't even, I, w I wasn't even looking at the plug when you pulled it out. Yeah, and I was just looking through the screen yeah. here. It's like, uh oh. Um, put it back up there and then uh, rotate it to the side. Go. I need a side view of the electrode there. Like this way? Yeah. Hmm. That's definitely... Uh, yeah. That tells us a lot, doesn't it? <laughs> okay. Go ahead and I'm going to zoom back out. And that is a uh, magneto side um, plug on the mag side. Okay, keep going there. So I'm not gonna I'm not gonna do a spoiler on what this is, but interesting. Let me zoom in again. Hold it back up there. And turn it sideways. Pull it back just a little bit. This way? Yeah, right there. We'll get a different camera with a close up lens on those. And that is that is the um, center magneto side plug right there. 
Awesome, huh? Cool. Just for grins, let's pull out the let's pull out the other two plugs too. Turn it sideways also. Yeah, right like that. Right there is perfect. And then point it right towards me so I can look down the throat of that thing. Okay, good. And that's the PTO side center plug. And turn a little sideways. Yeah, right like that. And so this is magneto, point to them, the magneto yes, side, the magneto and then side, the P magneto center, PTO, PTO center, center, and then PTO. Okay, good. Worked pretty good till that time you stuck it in that exhaust pipe or whatever it was. I was trying to see stuff. <laughs> Okay, I think this is going to work, but i got to get a little bit lower here. Can't quite. Um, shove the light through this hole on this side. That'll be... it won't be so glary. No, that sucks. Go back down the other hole. I like that one better. And then, um, actually, let's stop and get the pen light. I go here. Why don't we do the... let's do... I'll do this one, and you do the, the down the hole light. And between the two of them, I think we can get enough light in there to... Yeah, this is showing up pretty good. You can see that nice, even crosshatch. It looks like the crosshatch was really strong. That helps a little bit. Is it on or off? It's on. I can see it. So that's pretty obvious. Um, so while we pull the head and all of the... Um, added accessories off this thing so that we can uh, get into the cylinders and the pistons. Um, we just want to kind of summarize where we are right now. We pretty much have a good idea of why the engine stopped and that would be the um, seizure of the primarily the magneto side. We'll look at the PTO side a little bit more in depth as well. But um, even at this point we don't know what the root cause in is and of course, the root cause is always what we're looking for rather than just finding out the symptom is that the cylinder has been seized. But um, that doesn't do us any good at all until we can find the root cause of why that actually occurred. Oh, bring it back over here. Let's do a video of that. They all look like they're half stripped. I think, I think it's been, um, what do you mean it looks like they're half stripped? Oh, I mean the, all the corners are rolled over. I don't know let's if that's get normal. This, get this on video. I can't see here. I mean, not all of them, but to me it looks like somebody had a 16-bit Oh, using the wrong the socket on the thing. Sixteen-tooth socket yeah. or something, and strip the corners. So off. let's um, let's flip that over in front of the camera here, so we can take a look at the bottom of that and get that. Just hold it up there, and I'll kind of point. And so this is the mag, um, side. mag side, and this is the PTO side. Yeah, um, put the light up nice and high so I can... You not doing anything? Yeah, it's helping a little bit. Let me just balance that out a little bit here. And I'm going to turn that prop just a little bit so I can get that piston up at the top. Get out of the way. There we go. 
That's interesting. Now I'm going to go back the other way. We're rolling on that one. Let's go all the way to the top. I'm not going to disturb that yet. I want to be able to get a little bit more. And I'm going to go back down. Bring that light over here. Oops. There we go, right there. Nice strong crosshatch in there. Yeah, there's no scoring on that one at all on the cylinder walls that I can see. Okay, before you go anywhere with that, let's go back to the video here, and we'll just, um, you let do? me turn this light on here. The angle right here, maybe. Yeah, kind of, I want to see the perimeter of the thing all the way around. I'm going to turn this light back down. Just get a little of this light, and I'll change that white balance here. Let me zoom in a little. Awesome. Now let me get a little brighter in there. Okay, now just rotate. Huh. Man, <laughs> it's hard to rotate it and keep it in the same place. Okay, I'm good. Zoom back out. Like something I do. <laughs> Let's do the same thing we did with that other one where we rotate around. Let me zoom in a little here. Tilt it just a little bit more. Tilt it down. Uh, let me see if I can get that. Need that a little wider. Actually, tilt it up. I, I like that. Yeah, right there. A little more. A little more. A little more. Yeah, now we're talking. Um... Okay, go ahead and rotate. Awesome. Okay. Okay. Tilt it back so I can get a picture of the. There we go. What's all that gunk on there? Is that just slime? Yeah, it looks like it's just slime. You wipe it. Wipe or? it off. Um, just the just the oil, so I can see underneath the oil. There's something. Yeah, there's scuff mark right there. One there. Scuff and one mark there. Mark there. That ring is stuck, isn't it? Yep. Yeah, it's jammed in there. Oh, no, it's, no, not. it's not. It's free. Both of them are free. That's... Okay, i got to change positions so I can go to the other side here. That's, um, um, just like back here? Or? 
Yeah, that's looking good. Let me go up a little and change the white balance here. Come back with it a little bit. Yeah. Because that's, that's actually, there's a pressure mark there. Pressure mark there, pressure mark there. That Well, that's actually a seizure right there, isn't it? But it's not, it's not rough. This one looks rough here. Let me see. Really feel that. So where's the melting that you saw? Well, it looks like it's melted right Let me here. go to the other side and I'll, I'll shoot from that side. And let's see what I could do with that. And it's still free though, huh? Oh no, it's stuck right, it's stuck right there. That part's stuck. That's where it's pivoting right now. The pin is there. I'm going to have to get some closer shots once we get it off of there. Okay, I'm going to change to the other side, get that fourth quarter on there. Oh, good. More? Yeah, so that... It's actually got some wear right in there. It got, it got hot and squeezed all the way around, that's for sure. You can see... You can see right there, you can see right up there also. Yeah, right between the two rings. Uh -huh. stuff. So as you can see, we're starting to identify the reason for the engine stoppage. But let's reiterate once again that the seizure was only the symptom and not the root cause of the problem. We will continue to disassemble the engine and make sure that we've covered all of our bases. But in order to identify the root cause, we need to look at not just the most obvious problems, but the airframe and engine as a whole, and identify all of the contributing factors that were variables in the reason for the engine stoppage. And although we're pretty certain that the sudden stoppage was a result of an engine seizure, we are nowhere near the end of our investigation and analysis. In our next video, we're going to recreate the report that we sent to the NTSB on this investigation. The investigation analysis will bring us to a definitive conclusion on the root causes of the engine failure. So it looks like we're coming to the end of this video. We do enjoy sharing our love of aviation with all of our viewers, but it's the kind comments and all of the likes that really keep us motivated to make more content. If you're not already, please become a subscriber.